It's one of the most obvious, and it should be one of the greatest trades of all time. But time and time again, it's always turned out to be a Widowmaker. Hello and welcome to today's Daily Blitz. Now in today's video, we'll be going over one of what, were, what should have been one of the greatest trades of all time, but time and time again, it has simply ruined traders, right? And this is all about Japanese government debt. On so many occasions in recent decades, it seemed like Japan's debt has reached unsustainable levels and the prices for it must fall, but it doesn't. Now, Nikolai, you've come up with an interesting theory as to why this is, is that right? Yeah, so as far as I can tell, if a central bank owns the government debt, it almost doesn't matter, it's almost cancelled out. So let's quickly go through the figures. Japan's debt to GDP ratio is about 236%, but the Japanese Bank of Japan actually owns about half of that, which suggests that maybe the real debt that actually counts is just the 50% of the 236%, but 118%. But hold on a sec here, because uh, the central bank printing money to buy the debt is generally seen as something that you know is quite distorting. And it's generally seen as something that, uh, well, as money printing and as, uh, as damaging as money printing has been throughout history. So why exactly would it not matter? Basically because the government owns the central bank or controls the central bank, which means that debt is not on the market. It's not being lent to the government by someone who actually had to sacrifice something. So when it comes to setting the price and the interest rate of Japanese government bonds, what matters is that block of bonds that's actually out in the market and you're allowed to sort of take off the amount that's on the, the Japanese central bank's balance sheet. And if that's correct, then the debt to GDP ratio comes down to a fairly sort of typical levels for Western governments. So effectively, you are explaining this almost as uh, the government and central bank are really just two parts of the same the same uh, same coin really and effectively it's just two sides of the balance sheet so when the central bank is printing money to buy the government bonds then it is really no different from the government simply buying the bonds from itself right it owes them to itself and you can see that in the profit that central banks make from holding government bonds tends to be remitted to the national treasury to the government right but when the bank of japan does buy the bonds it does go into the market to buy them correct that's right so it effectively takes them off the market is is one way to think about it and it gives the printed money to market participants that's then spend it on other things, right? Yeah. So that's still distorting, right? It's very distorting, but the point is that the, the issue of solvency and too much debt is reduced by however much the central bank holds. And there needn't be a, a real limit to that amount other than inflation. And what we're really getting into here is MMT, modern monetary theory. My point being that you might disagree with modern monetary theory, uh, but the central banks are already implementing it. It's already happened. Central bankers are buying however much government debt they need to to keep things stable. And that's pretty much just MMT in practice. Right, so whether or not they say they support it, as the Bank of Japan has explicitly uh, said in recent months that they do not support MMT, what you're arguing is effectively that whether they like it or not, they are implementing it and they are performing it. And it's working to the extent that you know, the widowmaker trade hasn't played out. Right, so what can we actually draw from this? Basically that a government debt crisis is unlikely as long as central bankers are willing to absorb as much government debt as they need to in order to keep things stable. So, so long as a government uh, can print its own currency and has not, uh, le has not borrowed huge amounts of money in foreign currencies, then it should be able to keep things uh, on the go as far as national debt is concerned. If the central bank's willing to back them, um, if inflation emerges, for example, the central bank might not be willing to back them anymore. Well, there you have it, folks. Maybe debt to GDP ratios in Japan are not as extreme as previously thought. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to tune in next time.